Sheriffs say that instead of preaching the gospel, he was throwing panty parties. And Beginning with a current affair, so-called serious news gives way to a new kind of television journalism. Get out of my face. But the story of how America's news goes from bookish to butafuco begins with another familiar name, Rupert Murdoch. Back in the 80s, Murdoch's tabloid newspapers are filled with stories just as juicy and tantalizing as Mary Jo's. Murdoch inherited a paper called Adelaide News in Australia from his father. And then from there, he starts to become extremely successful turning papers into tabloids. One of the keys to Murdoch's success was his introduction of the Page Three Girls, nude models. These tactics helped Murdoch build a tabloid empire in Australia and the UK. Then he has his sights set on America. Murdoch buys the New York Post for $30 million and quickly transforms it into his kind of newspaper. Of course, it played on all the, the classic tabloid themes, you know, gruesome murders, sex scandals, bizarre events like UFOs. I think the all-time tabloid headline is the New York Post's headless body in a topless bar, because that blends sex with murder in this punchy, punny, five-word statement. Murdoch's approach to journalism is to publish what sells, glossy pictures, big print, and stories about sex and violence. But for him, newspapers are not enough. Today, confirmation of the largest single broadcast station transaction in history. It's part of an even- Murdoch decides to do something that has never been done before, inject his tabloid newspaper sensibility into a TV news show. The deal calls for Murdoch to pay some $2 billion for all seven Metro Media television. They had a very different philosophy of journalism or outlook, right? They, they looked at um, the American news scene as very austere, very boring, very drab. And they saw themselves as kind of like pirates and raiders. You know, they brag about that. Like they, they're going to conquer a, a news market. The captain of Rupert Murdoch's pirate invasion is Peter Brennan, a brash producer born in Australia. Brennan will become known as the godfather of American tabloid TV. An ex-porn palace turns into a house of prayer, and the community, instead of being relieved, is angry. I definitely believe this is a cult. A Current Affair debuts in New York City in the summer of 1986. It was an immediate ratings hit. The famous A Current Affair graphic where the pyramid comes in and they hear the ka-chung, that was uh, breaking the mold. Some experts are convinced that this is truly a home to demons. But is it? We'll take in our own exorcist tonight. It became, if you want to call it, lightning in a jar or a perfect storm. We were off on a ride that I'll never forget. This bloody Hollywood murder scene. The show right? tells stories that network news dismiss as tabloid rubbish. In the life and death of adult movie super stud John Holmes. Peter had this great vision that all these stories that regular newscasts were putting in the trash can were stories that our viewers would want to see. Those classic Shakespearean themes of conflict and lust and drama. Whoever had killed her had left her cruelly exposed. She was found naked from the waist down. A current affair quickly gains a reputation for being able to break news stories, especially when those stories are rife with sex and violence. The biggest early on story was the preppy murder story in early 1987 with Robert Chambers. He had rough sex with this girl in Central Park and she died. We owned that story. Things just weren't supposed to end that way. Not for Jennifer Levin, not for Robert Chambers. The crowning jewel of that story was one of our reporters, Rafael Abramovitz, had come across a tape that Robert Chambers had made right before his trial started and you saw the video of Robert Chambers tearing off the head of a doll. My name is... Oops. Stop! I think I killed it. And a current affair ran that tape. As soon as that story came out, the ratings were huge. Rupert immediately syndicated a current affair throughout the country. 
Sometime around four in the morning, they left Dorian's and made their way into Central Park. And some Along with telling stories ignored by traditional TV news, a current affair doesn't look or sound like those other shows. It incorporates music, sound effects, and actors, things that the mainstream news networks consider off-limits. They did reenactments. I don't think you would ever see the network news at that time doing reenactments. But what really distinguishes a current affair is the performance of its host, Maury Povich. We'll be talking live to the irrepressible Zsa Zsa Gabor, who, as you saw, has just taken, rather married, her eighth husband. <laughs> Unlike network anchors, Maury personally engages in every story. If you've watched The Current Affair for any length of time, you know I hate, I can't stand UFO stories. I mean, I can't stand them. A lot of anchor people, network anchor people, local anchor, they would introduce a story and, um, Joe Smith has a report from Dallas, and they would, and you would drop your head all of a sudden. Well, why the hell would anchor people drop their head as they introduced the story? Why didn't you look at the people? Why didn't you look at the audience for crying out loud? Tabloid papers are known for their visceral language in writing, right? And so the way you translate that in a TV news program is to have the host be much more emotionally expressive. And one thing about Mari Povich, you know, he was known to have the most expressive eyebrows in the industry. A physical training program for cadets so tough, they call it aerobic death. Maury's honest expressiveness is shocking to news traditionalists, while being refreshing to a new generation of viewers. Another major day. Huh? He's a complete departure from the voice of God type anchors who dominate the network news. Maury changed what a television host could be. For three years, A Current Affair is the only tabloid news alternative on TV. And this is why A Current Affair is so important, because it stands as Murdoch's first successful attempt to apply this kind of British tabloid style of the newsstand and print that he was a master of to the, the realm of television, to the medium of television, which is so important, again, to American culture. 